it's taken. Um, welcome everyone. It is now three o'clock. Uh, my name is Calandra Whitted. I'm the research assistant for the Health Equity Work Group. Some of you may know me. You probably have seen my name somewhere. Um, I'm here today to help assist with the, the HEAL meeting today. Um, we have Naya Ferguson that is here today. She is the new research assistant, officially the research assistant for HEAL. Um, so I, I want her to introduce herself. Not sure if you've met everybody. It's been a while, and I don't know how long it's been since HEAL folks have met either. So Naya, you want to introduce yourself? Sure. Hi, everybody. Um, I, my name is Naya Ferguson. I am uh, officially your new HEAL RA. So again, really excited to be here today uh, and get to know everybody and um, just kind of be incorporated in the work. Thank you, Naya. And Naya's been here. You've been here for a while. You're not new necessarily, yeah, I've, but you, you're, you're here now. To I've been over. around. Um, I, I was working with the coalition and uh, with Allison before, uh, as well as with other LHICs um, in the state of Maryland. I, so um, I do see some familiar faces um, um, with my work with the Horowitz Center at University of Maryland. Um, so, yeah. Just glad to be a, officially a part of the team. So I've been around for about a year now, I think. So. Okay. Well, welcome, welcome, welcome. Everybody is excited that you are here. Um, I want to just do some brief introductions. If this is your first time attending the meeting, um, if you could, please take yourself off of mute and introduce yourself, your name, and your organization, please. Hello, my name is Palan Moon. I'm sorry. Go ahead. My name is Palan Moon. I'm with Charles Regional Center for Diabetes Education, and I'm the new community Hello. health worker. Hello, I'm Melanie Clark. I'm from the Arc of Prince George's County. I'm the Education and Community Engagement Manager. Nice to be here. Thank you. Welcome. Welcome. Hey, good afternoon. I'm Alan Twig. I'm Executive Director for Community Health at Meredith Medical Center in Hagerstown, Maryland. And I co chair our local health improvement group. And uh, we had an invite today. Uh, to learn more about uh, food as medicine program. So thank you for that invitation and, and glad to be with you. Welcome, thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Jasmine Morales and I'm the health navigator for Prince George's Fresh. Thank you, welcome. Gabriella Perino, oh sorry, I'm Gabriella, I'm with Snap Ed. Um, I think some of your work has been overlapping with uh, one of my supervisors here and so I thought this meeting could be interesting to um, tune in on. So I'm here today. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. My name is Stephanie Hopkins. I'm the food security coordinator in Arlington County, Virginia. Um, but uh, I'm here to learn about what you guys are doing um, with your program. Sydney invited me to listen in um, and hear about what you guys are doing and see if I can borrow, uh, not steal, borrow uh, any ideas uh, to bring across the river. Thank you, welcome. And good afternoon, I'm Maisha Dion Cover. I'm from Care First, Blue Cross, Blue Cross Blue Shield, and I'm with the Community Health and Social Impact Team. And I've just recently learned of your work. I'm just here to learn more and listen in. Welcome, welcome, Maisha. Ethel Shepherd Powell, Community Support Systems in Brandywine, Maryland. Welcome. Hi, I'm Ann Marie Hart Bookbinder, also on the, the listening in side. I'm the Food Security Programs Manager with the Montgomery County Food Council, I'm trying to learn more about um, you know, what we can learn from other uh, counties working with this in this initiative, and also former SNAPED. So hi, Gabriella. <laughs> Hi, my name is Spencer. I'm a pharmacy technician here at the University of Maryland Charles Regional. I work with a transitional care team with diabetic patients, so I'm here to listen and see if we can as well borrow some ideas to help get the food as medicine program down here to our food starved area as well. 
Thank you. Welcome. Everybody, I'm Doug Spots, uh, Chief Health Officer at Meredith Health. Listening in today, uh, we are engaged in a Go for Bold, um, Do, Eat, and Believe in a Healthy Washington County um, out here. And so we're working on the um, healthier food choices and disease reversal um, through diet and dietary changes. Thank you. Welcome, Doug. Hi, my name is Jocelyn Loran. I'm a registered dietitian and a certified diabetes care and education specialist working at University of Maryland Charles Regional uh, Medical Center in their diabetes outpatient clinic. Hello, my name is Marguerite. I'm a grad student at George Mason University, just listening in to learn more about the uh, Prince George's Fresh um, for a course, so really interested. Thank you. And is there anyone else that didn't get a chance to introduce themselves that would like to at this time, please do so. And I also ask, yeah, I see you guys are already doing so, if you put your name and organization in the chat box just for note-taking purposes as well to help us out. Thank you. Okay. Well, I'm going to bring back the agenda and for today. Um, so I believe the first item of discussion is the Prince George's Fresh Pilot Program. Um, and the discussion leaders for this uh, topic today are Tarin Shaw, Sydney Diago, and Julia Gromfeld. If you can take over, please do so. Awesome. Thank you so much, Kalandra. And Naya, are, are you able to share the slides? If not, we can probably do that too. I don't think I have a copy of those. Um, so I can give you permission so you can share if that's okay. Awesome. And um, let's see, I'm Julia, could you pull them up and then I can uh, take over sharing um, whenever it's um, your turn to go through slides. Awesome. Well, I will go ahead and get us started. So I'm Sydney Daigle. I'm a senior program manager at the Institute for Public Health Innovation. Um, and I also serve as the director for our Food Policy Council in the county. So I'm, I'm particularly uh, excited that we have so many other food councils uh, representing on today's call. It's kind of a, a treat to be able to host folks for once um, at our table, if you will, um, from neighboring counties. Um, and uh, today we're gonna be talking a little bit about our Prince George's Fresh program. Uh, so this is a food as medicine program. And I wanna be you know, very clear that we are very much in the thick of implementing this food as medicine program. Um, really the point of today's call is to bring everyone who has expressed interest in this program up to speed. Um, and of course, to get our fellow committee members who are on the HEAL work group and on the subcommittee for food as medicine, I'm kind of familiar with where we currently are after a bit of a um, hiatus uh, this spring and summer with our meeting schedule. Um, so, you know, whenever we were pulling together this presentation, we joked a little bit amongst our team members that we should maybe call this uh, not ideal to implementation, but, you know, idea to troubleshooting, to implementation, back to idea, to troubleshooting, you know, to idea. Um, so it's very much been a, a circular process. Um, we certainly don't have it all figured out, and we're still working a lot of the kinks out of this model. Uh, so we're going to be really honest today about, about where we are, um, you know, what challenges we found, what we found that's worked really well. Um, and we hope that you guys will ask lots of questions um, and be just willing to share with us, too, kind of what you're going through with your food as medicine initiative. And, and hopefully we can all find ways to improve. Um, so uh, I want to... Um, also share that we're kind of in the launch phase at the moment for our program. So we'll be talking a little bit about like, you know, how things are going as we're launching. Um, but, you know, we're, we're certainly not like full blown in implementation at the moment. Um, so, you know, for those folks who um, are looking to borrow ideas, please do borrow freely, uh, but know that, you know, we are still very much in the testing phase. So um, we just wanted to level set with that um, up front uh, before we jump into it. Okay, so I will hand it over um, to another member of our internal planning team, um, Tarin Shaw, to go over our agenda, talk a little bit about the partners involved, 
Um, and then uh, Julia and I will also be presenting um, during uh, different points of this, uh, this PowerPoint. So Trent, off to you. <laughs> Thank you, Sydney. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Taryn Shaw, as Sydney mentioned. I'm a Community Benefit Program Coordinator with Adventist Healthcare and also one of the co-chairs of the Food as Medicine Committee, along with Leslie Jefferson, who's a nutrition at Giant. Unfortunately, she was not able to make it today, but she sends her greetings. For today's meeting, you will learn about the Food as Medicine Subcommittee, where we started to where we are now. So our timeline, what we've learned along the way, what's next for Prince George's Fresh and opportunities where you can get involved. Next slide, please. Here you'll see a list logo of all the partners involved. The Food as Medicine Subcommittee is part of the Prince George's Healthcare Action Coalition's Healthy Eating Active Living Work Group. The food related strat strategies of the HEAL Work Group are jointly led with our county's Food Policy Council, the Prince George's County Food Equity Council. The HEAL Work Group meets monthly and its subcommittees meet on a regular basis as well. The Food as Medicine Subcommittee has been on hiatus over the spring and summer as our Prince George's Fresh Steering Committee members meet on a weekly and biweekly basis to launch this program. I want to give special thanks to my fellow member fellow steering committee members for their hard work getting this program up and running. Leslie Jefferson from Giant Food, Michelle Burton and Christine Cariega from Amerigroup, Julia Grenfell, Sydney Daigle and Jasmine Morales and our past health navigator, Tra Travertine Garcia from IPHI, our HEAL research assistants, Megan Sontag and Naya Ferguson and the past Prince George's Healthcare Action Coalition coordinator, Allison Mendoza-Walters and as well as our past research assistant, Adeline Dornville, as well as Jessica Moyes from American Heart Association. We would like to also thank the funders who have made this work possible, Anthem Healthcare and Amerigroup, the Prince George's County Health Department and Adventist Healthcare. Now I'll pass it off to Julia. Great, thanks, Ren. Um, and good to see you all. My name is Felt. I am a program director with the Institute of Public Health and Innovation, um, and I work closely with Trin um, and and our other members of the team that Trin just mentioned um, to implement the Prince George program. Um, so really what, what is the program? So this is a free food as medicine wellness program. Um, participants receive well, fresh fund, um, $20 in fresh funds coupons every week um, to purchase on vegetables at Giant, um, as well as nutrition education class at Giant Nutrition. So uh, what are the goals? Um, the goals of the program are okay, really Julia. to increase the. Julia, I'm so sorry. I think your audio might be breaking up a little bit. Um, I'm not oh, sure. No. If I, I wonder if it's. That. I wonder if my computer is overcapacitated trying okay. to share. And uh, is it okay now, or is it still breaking up? I'm still breaking up a little bit. How about I try to share, and then you can you can continue talking, and I'll I'll grab share on the back end. Okay, technical difficulty. Sorry, guys. Um, so talking about the, the goals of the program, um, as, as Sydney pulls that up, can you guys still hear me? Yeah. Getting some nods. Okay. I'll we can. You. <laughs> okay, great. Thank you so much. Um, so the goals of the program are really to increase the consumption of healthy food for food insecure individuals. So one of the, the program is that um, folks are referred to the program and are screened as food insecurity, and we'll go over that process in just a minute. Um, so, you know, via um, additional money that they're receiving um, on their, their giant card, um, we, you know, are, are able to support them in, in purchasing fruits and vegetables. Um, the, another goal of the program is to address some of the structural determinants of health through comprehensive health services. So we know that these participants um, are food insecure and are really often experiencing diet related chronic disease. Um, so we hope to really connect participants to further resources um, like food and nutrition education classes, um, as well as food assistance resources like food pantries um, in the area to really improve health conditions um, via our trained health navigator. Um, 
Third, we hope to support clinical treatment options for folks experiencing diet-related chronic disease through healthy lifestyle changes, um, including increasing knowledge and consumption of healthy produce. Um, and then lastly, we really hope to strengthen doctor-patient relationships. Um, a part of the program is that they're working closely with our staff team and our health navigator, and we're encouraging them to see their physicians regularly. Um, and also it's an opportunity for their physician to actually you know, screen folks for food insecurity, but also provide them with resources to, to support them. Um, so they have something that they can you know, give them in hand um, if they are food in there. Next slide, please. Okay, so this um, slide, I know there's a lot of text, but this kind of goes through the ins and outs of the program and, and how this works. Um, so as I mentioned, um, the first step for this program is for folks to be screened for, for food insecurity or diet-related chronic disease, or both. It kind of depends on, on how the clinic is implemented. Um, once a physician has screened somebody um, and they are eligible to participate, they're given um, resources and information on the program and encouraged to sign up. Um, we then reach out to those, those participants or they reach out to us depending on, on what they prefer um, and we help them enroll in the program. So we have an onboarding process. We have welcome materials that, that our health navigators for a process will, will share with them. They'll conduct an initial health screening um, and then they'll walk them through what they'll receive for the program. So then they will start their, their program benefits. So that includes $20 loaded onto a giant card, that same card that you would use at the grocery store um, to get your coupons. Um, that same card would receive, have that $20 coupon loaded onto that every week. So our participants would receive their $20 directly on that card um, to shop. So they can purchase um, both fresh and, and frozen fruits and vegetables with that $20. In addition, they'll also start receiving nutrition education classes. So as we mentioned, we work closely with a giant nutritionist, Leslie Jefferson. Um, so they'll be able to participate in those nutrition education classes. Um, they'll shop, they use their, their benefit um, for six months. This is a six month pilot program. Um, throughout that time, our health navigator will be available to provide them with, with resources. Um, part of the program is not just giving them, giving participants that $20, but it's also you know, providing them with assistance on where to find a food pantry in their neighborhood, how to sign up for SNAP or any other um, benefits or assistance they need. Um, so through six months, we'll be working with our participants closely, participate in a pre, midpoint and post um, participation survey. Um, through that survey, we really ask um, questions about participants' um, health. It's, reported survey. So we ask them information on, you know, what are their eating habits? Um, what kind of fruits and vegetables do, do they eat at home? And then we'll also ask some health information. Um, what are their A1C levels to really kind of dig into some of the data a little bit more. Um, but it's a really exciting opportunity to collect this information and really demonstrate um, the program impact. Next slide, please. And I think this is where I turn it off to Trin. Thank you, Julia. Prince George's Fresh is an innovative food as medicine model for several reasons. The model relies on a grocery bonus card to upload funds, which allows for less touch points and paperwork. Any payment or no payment can be used in addition to the coupon, which means a participant can go and purge, use the coupon along with their regular grocery purchase, or if they just wanna go in and use the coupon alone, they they're allowed to do that. The program is also not tied to public benefits or immigration status, which allows us to serve a wider range of the population. The model can be scaled due to it being a digital coupon. So we can increase the number of the people we serve. So the program, we can serve 100 people and scale up to 1,000. And it's also in the sense that the retail locations where the coupon can be spent. So in theory, the program can also work at any grocery store that's within the whole day highs retail group, including Giant and Food Lion that uses the same technology. So being technology-based is able to scale and be able to be used at different locations. The coupon is digital and can be triggered at point of sale. Participants, 
They interface with staff remotely through texting and calls. So the participant is able to choose the method of communication that is most comfortable for them. A community health worker is also embedded into the program. So they answer the participants' health questions. They also help the participants navigate the program, work with them to address their other social determinants of health needs that fall outside of the program, such as helping them find food distributions near their home and sign up for federal nutrition assistance benefits if they are willing and eligible. Our model is also integrated within clinic operations. So it's just not at the store, but also within the clinic. And then we meet with the clinic teams to tailor the enrollment process for each clinic. So it works best with their workflow. So not every clinic is the same clinics. They, they maybe their, paper, their paperwork is different or the way they process their paperwork might be at the beginning, might be at the end. And we work with them so the program fits to work with how their office flows. Also, it's a cross-sector model of public, private, and nonprofit nonprofit stakeholders because health is not one dimensional. So we made sure our team is not one dimensional. So we are covering different aspects of health. Thank you. Next slide, please. Sydney. Yeah, so we wanted to, we, we keep on mentioning that this has kind of been a journey and we're not, we're not joking about that. Um, we've been at this for over two years now. Um, so we wanted to talk a little bit about kind of where, you know, where this idea started and the steps we took to put into place, because I know a lot of you are thinking about implementing, um, you, you may already be implementing a food as medicine model and, and sort of, you know, maybe you're shaking your heads thinking, yeah, it's a long, it's a long process, um, or maybe you're thinking about it. And I, I would want to, you know, just for you to take away that, uh, that this takes quite a bit of planning before you can actually get to implementation. Um, so we started looking in or kind of exploring this food or medicine concept uh, back in the summer of 2019. Um, we've mentioned, you know, I mentioned that, you know, we, we run a food policy council as well. At least um, Julia and I um, work a lot with our county's food policy council and Turin, of course, is one of our co-chairs. Um, and our food policy council became very uh, engaged with the Maryland Market Money Program back in the summer of 2019, um, advocating for additional funding for the program so that folks who shopped with SNAP and WIC and other federal food and nutrition assistance benefits at farmers markets um, could have their, their, their funds doubled, you know, so they could buy more healthy food, um, uh, more locally grown food, um, and also kind of stretch their, their food uh, budget. Um, so we thought this program was really great, and we still think it's really great, but we heard from one of our, our close partners, La Clinica del Pueblo, um, that many of their clients, because they had uh, mixed immigration status families, or perhaps, you know, they, um, um, they didn't have documentation, were unable to take advantage of the Maryland Market Money Program because it does rely on people using their federal nutrition assistance benefits, and so many of their clients either weren't um, eligible or they didn't feel comfortable enrolling in those programs. So we wanted to create a, a program that could still serve, you know, as, as many residents as possible that were having food access needs uh, while still connecting folks to, to really help, you know, healthy food, which was nice about Maryland market money is that it's, you know, kind of very much fresh fruit and vegetables because of the nature of shopping at a farmer's market. So we did some research um, and we um, learned, I think as probably many of you have about DC Greens' uh, model in uh, Washington, DC, with Giant Food, uh, where they have a full-blown produce prescription program. Um, we really liked the program. Uh, we thought it would be really neat to be able to bring it to the county, um, but we learned that you know it was a difficult program to scale because, um, because of the technology piece. So we were really interested in kind of figuring out um, how to make you know a program um, easy to bring to new locations using technology like the giant bonus card. Um, and of course, giant was also very interested in this because of course they want folks to shop at their store. So it was kind of a win-win. Um, so we started working uh, with giant, you know, uh, really I think it was around the fall when we start working very closely with them. Um, we, you know, worked with them and the DC Greens team to learn more about the model that was in place and, you know, talk about, you know, how the model could be adapted to better meet our program needs. Um, then we started, you know, once we felt like we had a strong model developed, shopping it around to potential partners. So we, you know, talked to many partners um, across the county, uh, and, and really that took around a, a year um, to, to really get the, the word out and let folks know this is something we want to do and find 
um, the right uh, funders. And we were able to secure our first set of funding, uh, our first pocket of funding rather for this program um, last year uh, from Amerigroup. And we were just really lucky to find a funder that was flexible, that was understanding, and more importantly, that wanted to be more than a funder, but like a true partner in this program. Um, and Amerigroup has opened up so many doors for us um, and, and really made it possible to, uh, for our team, who's not a, we don't have medical backgrounds, we work in public health, so really help us understand what it means to work at a, um, like a clinical setting and how you need to adapt a program so that it doesn't just make sense theoretically, but it really makes sense uh, with your workflow whenever you're seeing so many patients every day and you have really a limited amount of time on your hands. Um, so many kudos to our mayor group folks who believed in us <laughs> early on. Um, so after we secured that funding, we were able to start onboarding physician practices. This was, despite the expertise we had in-house with the mayor group and others, a lot harder than we thought it would be. And it took a really long time. And we're still, you know, in this iterative process of onboarding folks and and uh, getting patients flowing and working out the kinks and, you know, kind of doing more to make sure onboarding process is, is going to work for the next um, the next clinic. Uh, but we started with the clinic in Hyattsville um, and currently we're expanding to um, two more uh, to, well, you know, a hospital system, two more hospital systems um, in addition to that first um, clinical partner. Um, as we were onboarding, we were also getting the technology piece figured out. So through you know, this spring and summer of this year, we've been working very closely with Giant on getting this bonus card technology sorted out so that the digital coupon that we use um, works every time someone goes in and uses eligible per, uh, purchases eligible foods um, if they're part of this program. And um, that, that um, I think, surprise the kinks that we found surprised everyone <laughs> um and you know we're where it took some some um some testing to really figure out kind of what would trigger the coupon what won it um you know what things on the back in the system might need to be adapted um and again we were really lucky to have a strong partner with giant um for the food retail piece of things that was willing to um, work with us do lots of testing um, and really embrace kind of an iterative process because that is just the name of the game with this program so far. Um, and finally, over the past month or so, we've had clients start using the coupon in stores. And it's not a lot of clients. You know, we have a small group that's currently enrolled, um, but we're hoping that um, our numbers jump um, in the next um, couple of months as we have a, a few new um, practices coming on board. Um, and, you know, whenever, as we've been having clients kind of finally use the coupon, that's created a whole new um, set of, of work and challenges as well. Um, but we're excited because we've really gotten to use the talents of our health navigator, um, Yasmin, and our past um, health navigator, Traver team, um, to make sure that that social support piece of this program is really strong um, and that clients who are using their coupon feel really supported and feel like there are other health needs that fall outside of PG Fresh um, are also addressed. So that's kind of where we've been and where we are currently. Um, next slide, please. Oh, that's, I, I, that's me. Oh, I'm so silly. Okay. <laughs> All right. So I sort of spoke to this a little bit already, um, but where we are today is we're onboarding um, a couple of new sites. So um, we're, we're excited to see some of our, our partners who are onboarding um, have representatives on the call today. Uh, we're continuing to troubleshoot the technology that I mentioned with the, the bonus card um, and try to just make sure that things are as streamlined and efficient as possible. Um, I think Julia spoke to this briefly, but one of the most exciting pieces of, of having this bonus card um, load the electronic coupon is that we can see um, pre and post intervention data uh, from what folks have purchased. So we can see based on someone's bonus card number, um, you know, what, what kind of foods they were purchasing before they started the Prince George's Fresh program, um, what foods they purchased during this program participation, you know, with their $20 a week um, uh, coupon and fresh funds. Um, and, you know, potentially we, we won't do this because we haven't asked for their consent, but one could, if you ask for your client's consent, see the foods they purchased afterwards. You could really see if there was like a sustained behavior change. Um, so having that kind of data at our fingertips is really exciting. Um, and uh, we're, we're really looking forward to digging into it after we um, wrap up our first cohort of uh, clients who have used the coupon for six months. Um, and as I mentioned, we're doing a lot of work assisting patients in using their benefits. 
Um, so it's a new program. Um, folks sometimes feel a little bit nervous about going into Giant and you know using this coupon for the first time. Um, so our health navigator Yasmin has been really incredible and in, in just making sure that you know folks' questions are answered, that she's there to support them as needed, um, and we will continue to do that work. All right, so I think it's it's uh, off to I think I'm turning over to Julia to talk about our lessons learned so far. And Julia, let me know if you need um, any assistance with the audio. Okay, sounds good. I'll I'll jump in if my audio is cooperating, but chime in and interrupt me if you can't hear what I'm saying. Um, so here are a few of the lessons learned. I think we've already hit on some of these, um, but I'll just reiterate. So um, the first one is that technology really does take a long time to implement and to streamline. And yes, you cannot over test. So Sydney um, and Turin both, both talked about this earlier, um, but it, it really took us a while to get the technology piece off the ground and we are still working on it. We're still figuring out the kinks. Um, so we, we've learned this kind of the hard way. Um, we kind of I think got a little bit ahead of ourselves in the beginning where we wanted to start enrolling um, participants, but we didn't really have the technology piece figured out and squared away. Um, but in hindsight, um, it, it took us longer than we expected to get this technology piece off the ground. Um, so making sure we had ample time um, to figure that out, to figure out the testing um, would have been a little bit more ideal. So lesson learned along the way, um, give yourself quite a few months, um, a long time to, to implement that um, and figure out the kinks. Um, another lesson learned um, is that champions at the clinic level are really, really critical for success. Um, so as, as Turin mentioned, um, and kind of to the second, to the third point here, um, clinics are, are all unique, um, but we also know that each clinic is going to have its own unique champion. So maybe that champion will be a physician, um, maybe it will be um, an, an office staff, so somebody who's really excited about the program, who you can kind of sell this to and work with them closely um, to make sure they understand the program, to get them the materials that they need to share this program with their patients um, so we can get folks enrolled. Um, so to the third point, like I mentioned, um, no cl two clinics are alike. So it's really important for us um, as you know, the program implementers to really tailor this to, to meet their needs. So maybe a clinic will be you know, working with their physician to refer folks to the program, or maybe it will be the front desk staff to refer folks to the program. So really figuring out who are those champions and then what are the structures and systems and processes, cultures at that particular clinic and how can we work with them to really make a program that fits, um, you know, fits that clinic. Um, so the next thing is that we really learned the hard way, I would say, um, that we need an easy onboarding process. So I think especially as we've been developing this program over the past year, um, we're really in the weeds of, you know, the finer points of the program. Um, but it's really important to kind of distill that information and figure out kind of the easiest way possible to share this information with the clinics um, and, and help them understand, you know, how they can refer um, their patients. We know that clinics and physicians are dealing with a million things every single day. They're referring to their, their patients to so many different programs. This is not the only program. Um, there are various things that they're screening for. So really understanding how busy these people are and then helping them do this in the simplest way possible is, is really, really key to the success. Um, another lesson learned, we know that the health navigator is, is really our champion within the program. Um, so that person is, is so important to you know, being the face of this program. Um, you know, we, we so value that position. Um, now we're really excited to have Yasmin on board, who is our health navigator. So she's the one, um, you know, that is, is screening those phone calls. It's a really vulnerable position for folks to reach out to us. Um, we know that they're food insecure. They know that they're looking for resources and it's up to us to really be kind of a, you know, that warm face um, to welcome them into the program to refer them to um, assistance services, whether it's you know, this particular program or other programs if they're not interested in the program or if they're not eligible. So it's really important for us to create kind of a, a warm environment to bring folks in. Um, another lesson learned, we know the importance of data sharing agreements. Uh, so throughout this program, that's been a big hip hiccup for us. Um, we, it's, it's definitely been challenging kind of getting that information um, figuring out kind of what, what we can and cannot receive from clinics. 
Um, but we, we actually recently met um, with the Public Health Law Center and had a really informative session with them. And, and what we kind of came away learning was we actually can receive a lot more information than we thought we could from some of the clinics. So it's probably okay for the clinics to share, you know, the folks that they've referred to the program with us. That being said, it's really up to the clinic and what they feel comfortable sharing. So it's really important for us to figure out kind of both, you know, who are the clinics? What is, what is their, you know, unique culture there? But then also what are they okay sharing with us, you know, and how can we make sure that they're comfortable sharing information with us? And if they're not, how can we kind of figure out a workaround and make sure, you know, we can implement a process that, that everyone is happy with and everyone is comfortable with. Um, and then the last lesson learned to share is that regular communication between partners is really critical. So we know that having regular check-in meetings um, with our champion and with the staff at the clinic is super important, um, as well as the, the um, check-in meetings with, with our own team. So we need to make sure that we're touching base with the clinic, we're making sure that they have the materials that they need, that the process is working, um, and that we can you know, address any issues as they come up. Okay, I know that was a lot, um, but next slide, please. I think this is still me. Okay, um, so some of the next steps, um, like we mentioned, um, it's been a learning process for all of us. So one thing that we're doing is we're improving our onboarding process. So like I mentioned, we know that it's really important to kind of simplify the materials, simplify the information for the clinics. Um, so we're working on kind of updating some of our materials. Um, and simplifying that. And um, we'll be sharing that with the clinics. And we're also ha happy to share that with, with anyone in this group if you're interested in seeing kind of our um, 2.0 materials. Um, in addition, we're also developing some outreach materials for the clinics. Um, so some of the clinics have expressed interest in having signs in their, in their waiting rooms, um, some information you know, on the front desk staff, um, with, with the front desk staff. So we're developing some, some posters and some outreach materials to help kind of solve this program. Um, like Sydney mentioned, we're also onboarding more clinics. So hopefully we'll, we'll have a few more clinics on board in the next um, month or so, and we'll have some more um, participants enrolled um, in the next few months. We're also working on a consent form. So like I mentioned, um, this, this data sharing piece has been kind of um, a hiccup for us, but what we've learned is that um, it's, pro it's probably um, pretty simple to um, provide the clinics um, with a, a sheet um, that folks can fill out saying they consent to our team reaching out to them um, to help bring them into the program. Um, so previously what we had been focused on was making sure that this was kind of a, a patient and participant driven outreach process. So they would give, they would receive information on how to sign up um, and then it'd be up to them to reach out to us. We know that there are a lot of issues there. A lot of folks fall off. You know, they lose the information about the program. They don't reach out to us. So it's a lot better if we can actually reach out to them um, to see if they're interested in signing up. So putting together that consent form um, will be a really key piece of that. Um, similarly, we're also improving data sharing agreements as we onboard new clinics. Um, we're working to understand, you know, what the clinics are comfortable sharing with us, um, whether we can develop any agreements with them. Um, to share information on who they screen and who's referred to the program. Um, in addition, we're applying for support to launch a patient advisory board and physician advisory board. Um, so that will be a really key process in you know, helping improve the program and bring on community voices um, and, and folks to, to really provide insight and guidance as we, we flesh this out a little bit more and we'll have some more information on that in a minute. Next slide, please. Karen, I think it's off to you. Yes, thank you. Here, as mentioned before, opportunities to engage. You can join our Hill subcommittee by emailing pghac at co.pg.md.us. We meet month. We're working on our meeting times, <laughs> as mentioned earlier. Right We're working on those. But if you email, you'll get added to the list. So when we have a meeting, you'll be notified. You can also join our healthcare provider and community advisory group. It's newly launching, so please fill out the form below. We'll send out the notes, and I believe Sydney will drop it in the chat. You could fill out the fill out the form. 
if you work in a physician's office or healthcare setting, or if you work with community members on health-related programming, we would love to have you join our ad hoc advisory group to help us tailor the program and understand how these different pieces work together. Also, you can join the Prince George's County Food Equity Council. We're a fun bunch. <laughs> you can join our mailing list at the link or attend an FBC monthly meeting. You can email Julia at the email provided and you'll get added to our meet and invitation. Meet and invitation. Next slide. Uh, thanks, Doreen. Yeah, now, now we just have questions. This is our contact info if you want to reach out to us directly with anything. Um, but I know we already had one question in the chat. Um, so I can I can maybe jump, I, I, I can try and um, to answer it. And please, the rest of the team, um, I'd love to have your feedback too. So um, Stephanie from Arlington, uh, for their, their food security coordinator, um, asked if the, 20, the full $20 has to be use at once um, and if funds roll over if not all use in one week this is a really good question so the way the technology works um, for the the bonus card coupon that we keep talking about um, it is a one and done thing so once you once you check out if you buy any qualifying purchases and you're part of this program um, then your coupon gets triggered and you know it, hopefully you use you know the full twenty dollars but if you only buy five dollars worth of apples then yes you do lose that remaining fifteen dollars um, so that's really why having our health navigator is so important because we you know there are some some tricky aspects to this um, to this program and some things that are not intuitive. So um, we, you know, brief folks um, thoroughly on how the coupon works. And we're even working on um, creating like other resources for participants. So they have, you know, a card in their wallet uh, when they go to the store that that one, you know, kind of has the information they need about the program, but also so they can show it to someone at the store if, they, if they're having trouble or something. Um, but yeah, we, we, you know, resources to support them are really important. So they fully understand all the rules, if you will, of the coupon. Um, and funds do not roll over. Um, so the funds kind of start back over every Saturday morning. So you have your $20, you spend it hopefully from Saturday to Friday. Um, if you don't spend it, if you don't go to the grocery store that week, then, then you lose that $20. Um, are there any protein sources included? Are it purely fruits and vegetables? It is purely um, frozen and fresh fruits and vegetables um, with no additives. So um, it's it's a fresh fruit and vegetable incentive program um, at its base. And we made that decision um, because we were we, we were seeing that at least whenever we started this work, it seemed like fresh fruits and vegetables were hard to come by at a lot of the food distributions um, that we worked with, you know, food pantries that we worked with. Um, and um, it also seemed like when folks were going to get, you know, free food and particularly fresh fruits and vegetables, you know, they, they didn't always have a choice and they weren't able to necessarily choose culturally relevant items. So we thought it was really important that we increase people's choices of fruits and vegetables that work well for their families. Um, and how did we decide on $20 per week? Uh, we did an extensive literature review before we started. Um, the model um, and when we were designing our model and it seemed like $20 a week was really the gold standard um, based on the research that we reviewed on um, produce incentive programs and produce prescription programs. Um, we were also very impressed by the amount of produce you can buy for $20 from Giant, especially whenever you're like shopping the sales and everything. So it's a lot of food. Um, okay, great. I see a question from Spencer and Stephanie, if I didn't address anything or if you have follow-up questions, feel free to, to jump in on audio. All right, Spencer, did you have a question? I see your hand. Hi, I did. Um, so with there being so many giant locations um, throughout the different counties, does a patient have the ability to go from one giant in PG County to a giant in Charles County and still use the um, coupon without any issue thus far, I guess? It's a really good question. Fortunately not. Um, so we have, oh, ooh, is it 11 giants participating in Prince George's County? I, we will, we'll check the number. We have quite a few giants participating in the county. Um, uh, currently, we don't have giants participating in other counties. Um, so if you had, you know, you were a program participant, you could go to any of the participating uh, giants in the county, um, but you couldn't go to say like a giant in Baltimore City or something like that and shop with the coupon. But we hope that 
we're able to expand it and that, you know, in future, whenever we get the kinks worked out this pilot stage, that someone, you know, could shop in a, a more wider radius of stores with the coupon. But that's a really good question. Um, and then I had one more question. Um, Giant has like a giant food app. Would there be any way you guys could put that information in the giant food app, like which products were available for purchase? That's a cool idea. Yeah, we haven't, we have not, um, we didn't think about that. We never made that connection with the app. So that's, that's a really great idea. And we can certainly talk to the Giant team about that. We have a long list of dream scenarios and ideas for further implementation. So great, great suggestion. Um, and I just got another question in the chat, which I'll just address because I'm sure other folks might have the same question. So the question is, do you have to use the $20 at one time or can you use it throughout the week? Um, and you actually have to use it in one purchase. So if you go to the grocery store one day and you, know, you only have $15 of, of produce that you spend, you're going to lose that $5. You won't be able to spend the additional $5 on another purchase. So it's one time, once a week, um, use it or lose it like Sydney said. Any other questions? Feel free to drop them in the chat or, or take yourself off mute. Hi, right, sorry, one more question. Um, are you guys targeting patients or are there just patients that come to clinics and you guys find them there? Um, I'm, do you wanna take it, Julie? I'm, I'm also happy to jump in after you. Um, so we're working, we're, we're kind of trying to sell this to a few clinics um, to get them on board. Um, so we're right now, um, we, we have one clinic on, or I guess two clinics on board um, and we're working on, on bringing some more, more folks in. Um, but Sydney, I'll, I'll let you explain any further details as needed. Yeah, yeah. So we, I wouldn't say that we, um, like we weren't necessarily trying to drive patients to clinics, but we were targeting clinics um, in areas where we know there's high rates of food insecurity and that there's some other kind of metrics that we are really interested in, like high rates of, um, of um, diabetes and hypertension. Um, so uh, as far as like how patients are further um, screened once we know, once we have selected that targeted clinic, um, they get screened for food insecurity um, at, at most of our sites. Um, and, uh, and then they also get screened at some sites for diet related uh, chronic disease, um, specifically diabetes, type two diabetes, sorry, prediabetes, type two diabetes and hypertension. Um, and, and, you know, I think to, you know, probably physicians really push folks who say they want to make a dietary change to, to reach out to us, but we don't, we don't know so much about the, the kind of, um, you know, secret sauce there that, that actually gets people to, to call our number or reach out to our staff. Uh, but so yeah, does that answer your question, Spencer, about kind of how patients are, are targeted? That does, thank you. Okay, great. Uh, hi, this is Ethel. Can you share where the uh, current clinics are? Yeah, absolutely. So um, our the, the participant clinic that I mentioned uh, J, is J. Richard Lilly in Hyattsville. Um, so we're also, uh, you know, pursuing uh, getting a, a Fort Washington uh, Medical Center on board through Adventus. Um, and Taryn, if you can, if anyone has the exact name of the practice. <laughs> Adventus Medical Group, Fort Washington. <laughs> Thank you. I'm so sorry about that. Okay. So we're currently enrolling um, one of their primary care practices um, there and uh, dropping out some materials later this week. Um, and we are we are pursuing um, you know another hospital system that I I will not name unless they want to identify themselves um, as well to to get them enrolled. Um, so yeah, does that answer your your question, Ethel? Yeah, and I'm wondering if you would like for me to um, drop something in the client's food baskets at Akakik, which is right in the area of the Fort Washington uh, clinic. Uh, that's a great idea. So we, um, the way that we currently, and that's a great idea, I'll say, but we're probably not ready to do that right now. Um, so okay. since we're kind of in this pilot phase, we have like a limited amount of seats because, you know, you have to fund the $20 coupon. Um, so we're having, we're going through um, the clinic offices and having the physicians kind of push the enrollment to us. 
um, so that we make sure that people are properly, properly screened so they meet like our program criteria and also to prevent like our staff from um, getting overwhelmed uh, with like demand whenever we only have like a certain number of seats. Um, further, I'll just say that, you know, for instance, with the um, Adventist, Adventist is funding their, their, their patients, you know, to participate. So we have to be a little bit careful about, you know, like how, how patients get to, to our staff. Um, we went, want someone who wasn't a, a patient Adventist to, to reach out and for us to, you know, get confused about where they were coming from. Okay. I, I will just um, say in addition though, part of this program, it's, it's both referring um, patients to Prince George's Fresh to receive this $20 coupon, but we're also providing resources on, you know, where to get food assistance, how to sign up for, for various benefits. So we do have um, a, an, a kind of flyer info sheet um, in English and Spanish that um, it's, it's kind of part of this program, but it's also really for, for anyone who's interested in receiving that. So Ethel, if you, you know, are interested in, in giving that out to your clients, um, you know, via your, your food boxes or, or what have you, feel free um, to include that. And I'm happy to send that via email and I can drop the link in the chat if anyone wants to just take a look at that directly. So that is for anyone to use, for anyone to share around, um, please kind of help spread the word, but that's a, a pretty comprehensive resource for, for food assistance and benefits in the county. Oh, Julia is so right. And that is another one of our dreams is to eventually have a, a two-way referral system where food pantries can refer folks to participating clinics and participating clinics in this program can refer uh, their patients to food pantries if they test, if they screen positive for food insecurity. So down the road goal. Um, so we have a couple questions in the um, in the chat. <laughs> um, so one is uh, what happens after the six month pie? I'm laughing. I'll I'll start the question that made me laugh. So um, it, do clients do clients get kicked out for not using a certain amount of weeks? Um, that's a good question. We just started. I don't anticipate that will kick people out. Um, I, but you know, I guess I, I think it's the sort of thing where like the money would go unused. But the thing is, um, now I'm like really showing all the kind of back behind the scenes gears here, but um, the money, you know, we reimburse Giant for, um, for purchases. So, you know, we could always just take the money that that client didn't use and hopefully fund someone else um, in the program. Um, but yeah, that's a, that's a great question. That's something that might happen that we have someone who signs up and rolls and then just doesn't ever use their, their benefit. But we're really hoping that um, you know people are motivated to get the food and that um, if they take the step of reaching out to us, to our staff, that they really are interested in this program. Um, but that's a good mm -hmm. question. Oh, yes. Yeah. And to add on to that, that's why the health navigator position is so important because we'll see that that person, that participant isn't redeeming and our health navigator can reach out to find out if there's an issue, if there's a barrier and make sure that they're all right. So another checkpoint. So yeah, that's a, a good way. Yeah, that's a yeah, good point, Taryn. And we do have access on a monthly basis and hopefully it'll be more regularly to see like who's spending their coupon and who's not so that, um, you know, Yasmin and our team can reach out and encourage people to go shop. Um, so someone else asked um, who employs the health navigator? So um, we and Super Public Health Innovation employs, uh, employ Yasmin. Um, and she is, our, we, you know, our, our health navigator position is a bilingual position because um, we do have a lot of folks who speak Spanish as their, their uh, first language. Um, so we just feel really, really lucky to have Yasmin on our team. And she's so talented that um, she does a lot of work with our, our clients, but she also does a lot of work on, you know, behind the scenes stuff for the program too. Um, so someone else asked what happens after the six month pilot? That is kind of a, an unknown, you know, what DC Greens has done is they allow, I think, people to, to re-up after um, their initial phase in the program. I think it would be a dream to be able to do that one day. So I think it just kind of depends on the outcomes we see and the funding that we're able to secure. Uh, but that's a, that's a really great question. Um, okay, cool. I'll stop talking now in case folks want to unmute and ask more questions. Hi, I'm sorry. I had one more question. Um, the $20 that the participant get is that per patient or per household? That's per patient. We haven't had a situation yet where we have um, two patients in the same household uh, get the uh, coupon, but that might happen. And um, if it does, they'll have a whole lot of produce coming into their house.
Any other questions? Well, I don't have a question. I just wanted to jump in and add something from my experience as a tester. So I had the opportunity to, to test out the coupon, which was like really exciting with um, two, I don't know, it's like they're family members on a good day, friends on a bad day, <laughs> but with two testers. And, uh, you know, we went through the whole process and it was really enlightening to see how they were responding that, you know, I thought this was just like, it would be so easy, like, here we go. But they had so many questions and it's just really important, really important to have the uh, health navigator to assist them throughout. And, you know, the other learning piece was that you can, they could get the produce, but that doesn't mean that they felt com like comfortable with what to do with it. So that's also why it was so important to, that they knew about the giant resource for the nutrition education and to have that support of like, okay, so I have all this spinach, what do I do with this? You know, um, and to also help them see how they can get the most out of their benefit. Because I know that the nutritionist that giant can also, they do store tours and they can teach you how you can um, take advantage of good deals so that you can use, get more frozen produce instead of fresh. And that's a way to stretch it and tips like that. So just to highlight the other features of this program so that, you know, it's comprehensive for people. Any other questions or, or comments? Yeah, thanks for that, Michelle. The testing was super interesting. I was a tester as well, and it was um, it was it was exciting and also intimidating to do it. So, I think we all learned a lot through that process. And I, I will just say, you know, I know everyone was mentioning in the beginning that they're hoping to borrow pieces um, of this program. So please do, you know, we would not be where we are today if we hadn't borrowed significantly from the DC Greens programs or, or other Produce Rx or Food is Medicine programs across the country. So it's really part of, of this process. So if you have additional questions about how we've implemented certain ins and outs of this, please feel free to reach out. We're, we're always happy to share. All right, so I guess we're not here any more questions. So um, Naya and Kalantra, we'll turn it back to you guys if you wanna wrap up with some announcements about PJJC, see one in the chat. Thank you, Sydney, the great presentation. I wanted to make sure that you made a request for any supports that you needed for this project too. That was a part of the agenda. Anything you want to request for members to help you move forward with the project? Yeah, yeah, thanks for that. So we um, we are, you know, as I think uh, everyone who talked about this program spoke to, um, we're still trying to work out kinks. And so we, we kind of see like two big areas where we just need like more expertise, more learning. Um, one is uh, with community members. So we, we really want to create like a patient advisory board eventually. Um, as well as a physician advisory board um, or kind of like clinical staff advisory board. So, you know, we have to ask about that. Um, we want to at least have a, a group of folks that we can reach out to with questions. We probably won't be able to convene, convene folks like on a regular basis unless we get support to do that. But we can, you know, have your name on a list and reach out to you as a, as a person with expertise um, in kind of the healthcare space or, um, you know, as a, as a uh, either professional um, who works with community members on health uh, related programming. So uh, we have a form, um, oh great, to drop the link to the form in the chat. So if you could sign up for that, we'd really appreciate it. And we'll probably send you questions and also uh, get your feedback on resources that we develop as you have, you know, capacity and availability. Um, so that's one thing. And the other way that you can help us is just signing up for the HEAL work group and the Food Equity Council uh, meetings as well. Um, you know, everyone who presented today, we're there, you know, uh, Julia and, Jez and Yasmin and I are, are funded to work on this program, um, but everyone else is a volunteer who's giving their time and expertise and knowledge. And so we, we need more engaged folks to make sure this program is as successful as possible. Um, it really is kind of volunteer powered. And it came from an, you know, an idea when we were all just volunteers working on this. So um, I think you know, together um, you, can, you can really make a lot of impact as a volunteer in a larger group. 
Um, and yeah, that's kind of what we need help with. Uh, also, I mean, if you guys want to fund the program, we'd love to bring more patients on board. So I'll put that shameless plug in as well. <laughs> Muted. Thank you. Um, just one final announcement. I know things are wrapping up. Um, just a reminder in the chat box is the PGHAC quarterly meeting. It will be held December 14th, which is a Tuesday at 6 p.m. Um, we're doing another hybrid meeting. So it's going to be at the hospital, UM Capital Regional Hospital in Largo, the new hospital. Um, please register. If you want to attend in person, it's limited space. Um, so please do that as soon as possible. You can email PGHAC at co.pg.md.us. So please do so as soon as possible. And that's all my announcements. <laughs> Anything else? And we'll coordinate with you all about the next meeting date too. We'll get that um, together and that'll be on the next, um, the minutes that'll come out of this meeting. So we'll have that ready for you. All right, if nothing else, that's it, it's four o'clock. Um, we appreciate your attendance in this um, meeting and participation, and um, we look forward to seeing more of you guys in the future. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thanks everyone. Thanks for coming. Take care. Thanks everyone. Bye. -bye.